Welcome to the Slide Getting Tech Simplified channel. And in this video, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I got a special guest with me. We doing a, I'm doing a sub-series called Woman in Technology. And today I got Filing Blossom here from Cloudflare. All around amazing lady that you need to know. But anyway, let me stop stealing your thunder. Fallon, tell them about yourself before we get started. Hi, everybody. My name is Fallon Blossom. I work at Cloudflare as a multimedia content designer on our product content experience team. I also am the global co-lead of Afroflare, Cloudflare's employee resource group for African folks, African diasporic folks, excuse me, and our allies. And I think that's about it. That's enough. That's a lot. Yeah, you see, that, that's about it. Hey, she's, she's humble, as you can tell here, but I'm going to try to get some gems out here. And the reason why I wanted to do this is we got to give back. And this is one of our forums to share kind of where we came from, especially to the women out there in the IT field. If you're someone that's on the fence and thinking about it, you know, these, this series is here to get you encouraged to you know, go all in it. And if you're someone who's in there, you know, and you want to share your story, reach out to me because I love to hear it and share it because I think people just need to know. So we're going to get started. So Fallon, would you mind sharing your background and how you progressed through like, you know, your early years into your IT career and how did you kind of get into it? Because I think that would be great for people to know. So I had a very winding road to tech. Um, I had I never thought in a million years that I would honestly be working in tech because I don't have a technical background. I mean, I even I really didn't even like math. And so in my ignorance, I assumed you only had to be good at math and science or STEM to work in tech. And here I am now as a designer in a non-technical role. Um, but my first job out of college, so I went to Ithaca College, I uh, got a bachelor's in television radio production because I was a TV kid and I love TV. And I was like, oh wait, you can do this for a living? Like you go to school for TV? Okay, I'm gonna go. Um, <laughs> and so I went. And <laughs> while I was there, you know, I honed my production skills, got to work with a whole bunch of different folks. And when I wasn't doing television stuff, I was actually learning critical race theory too. So I ended up pulling together like one of my first projects wasn't really even mine. It's like a project that I inherited from a graduating senior was a radio show called Bridging the Gaps. And it kind of pulled together all those things. It pulled together that critical race theory knowledge that I was learning to kind of understand and unpack my own identity, my own experiences. Because I had come from New Orleans, the night water New Orleans, going all the way to upstate New York. Okay. That was a big shift for a 17 year old. Yeah. Um, and I was just trying to make sense of stuff the best way I know how. And I'm a nerd. So I'm going to like intellectualize it. Yeah. Um, and so through that radio show, I got to talk to people about politics, about race, about identity, about class. Also play a bunch of music because I'm, again, being from New Orleans, I grow playing music, <laughs> love music, was convinced I was going to be a piano player. <laughs> um, and then from there, I really just kind of just kept trying to get the next job. I'm not one of those types of people who has like a five-year, 10-year plan. For me, my life has really just been put one front in front of the other. So the first foot, the first step was production. Didn't work out. Then I went to law. It worked for a bit. I worked at a couple different law firms, doing a couple different things. Didn't really stick. The third step was education. I got my way to Harvard, the Graduate School of Education, where I worked in ed research for... <laughs> seven years wow. <laughs> and but while I was there I got to experiment and explore all of those different things that I brought to Harvard right so the critical race theory stuff the production stuff when I was working in law the writing skills because I hone my writing so much as a legal assistant because when writing for lawyers and attorneys you really have a very limited amount of time to get things done you have to be very precise and convincing with your arguments so I brought that writing experience and they allowed me to use all of those skills to kind of work on their projects, set the content strategy, build community, create content. And once I finished my master's at Harvard in digital media design uh, last year, I was looking to use it. And I kind of was in that same spot. I need to find a job that like, I can use all these skills for. Enter Cloudflare. <laughs> and they had their first ever role for a technical content designer. So they were building out the writing team, but they didn't really have a designer that sat on the team. And 
I became that person. That's fantastic. So I guess my next question is, what would you have told yourself earlier now with the knowledge that you have now? If you could talk to that 17-year-old Fallon, what would you say to her? Mm, get to tech faster because you okay. could do a lot more and have a lot more autonomy and power and you, you won't have to fight so hard to get your voice heard. <laughs> Figure out a way to tech sooner. Um, okay. Again, I think I am the sum of my experiences and I bring all of those experiences and my mm -hmm. story to everything that I do. Yep. I would have tried to push myself to go a little harder a little sooner if, yeah, with everything that I know now. Okay. So next one is what obstacles did you have to overcome? I know you shared a few of them now, just making that transition a little bit later. Yeah. What other yeah. things that could, could have discouraged you along the way that you found a way to persevere through to get you where you are today? Not knowing what I didn't know. Okay. Um, here's the thing it's it's i didn't realize this until later on that your network is so 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 important mm -hmm. again i'm from the lower ninth ward of new orleans right and yeah. if anybody knows anything about that like not too many folks like leave there yeah. and my family i love them they love me they're fantastic folks but again due to systemic oppression racism all of the things that african americans experience in this country yeah. we are held back unfortunately a lot of times through no fault of our own so a, a lot of the stuff that held me back is just because I wasn't aware. Remember, when I first started talking, I said, I only thought people who worked in tech were math people. Yeah. And Where did that come from? I can't even track that back to anything specific, even when I try. But probably somewhere I heard somebody say that. Probably somewhere I saw that on TV. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't see is me yeah. <laughs> in those spaces doing those things. So I feel like the lack of representation, the lack of awareness, even though I was trying, like I'm somebody who's extremely motivated to improve constantly, improve myself, improve my life, improve my family, like improve people around me wherever I can. But a lot of times in my experience, I just didn't know what I didn't know. And it took me making a relationship, making a friend, asking a question, happening upon some something that's that like open my world up um so yeah i would say that's been the biggest thing because once i found out mm -hmm. i would go yeah. but how can you know what you don't know and a lot of things are kind of unfortunately hidden from women and i will go ahead and say specifically black women okay that's and that's i i kind of see that from the male side growing up in bed brooklyn new york awareness is half the battle i felt like Someone yeah. who was good with computers since seven, eight, eight yeah. years old. If I would have yeah. known this was here, um, and no fault to my own, my parents just didn't know that, right? They didn't have that experience. So it took me a little bit longer to get here. But if I was here a little bit, you know, sooner, is so many things I could have started putting into place at, in junior high school, going after right. programs, figuring it out. But, yeah. you know, that awareness is key. So if you're watching this and you know someone who has that, potential to share it with them let them see that that you don't have to have that math background because i'm an average math person at best um but i'm really good at computers right so i still made i found a way for me to be here right so then it's mm -hmm. all different types of roles and one thing to keep a focus on the women women make up 25 percent of the it only 25 percent and out of that 25 percent major only three percent or I think it's about 5% are African-Americans, about 3% are African-Americans, and 1% are Hispanic. So mm -hmm. why is that? It's not because they're not qualified. It's that awareness. If they can do it, it's that push, right? So mm -hmm. um, we got to do all our part just to share it, to make them aware of it, so they encourage to do it and make it fun, right? I think one time I feel like technology for me, I always remember when I used to watch the videos, it would be, this is technology, and it's so amazing. I'm like, in that monotone voice, we got to do a better job at bringing that energy, bringing that fun. But I, I understand, especially what you talked about is, I do a lot of open mic nights, poetry. So I try to bring my host atmosphere into being a host for IT, right? If I'm yeah. talking about Microsoft and configuring a server, it isn't that exciting. But if I can change my voice and include you a little bit more, mm -hmm. at least keeps you a little bit longer to want to watch the whole video. So the oh, next yeah. thing, and the next thing I want to talk to you is when you got into the tech world, how is that culture gap? So we talked about before that women only make up 25% of the workforce in the IT fields. And then only 3% of African-American women make up 
inside that 25%, how you face any obstacles and how did you deal with it? And how would you encourage someone who's going through that right now to persevere or have them pivot or should they go head on? Like, how do you have that type of conversation internally with yourself? And this is something I think I thought about a lot. And I think that my <laughs> advice and my strategy or tactic changes based on the situation. Okay. So the best advice that I could give, which is totally unfair um, for women to, <laughs> to even say, but I, your emotions sometimes can get the better of you. And if you can kind of think more strategically first before you do or say anything, I think that is probably going to be your best chance at success. Again, not fair yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. However, I've, in my experience, strategy beats emotions and feelings nine times out of 10 facts, value propositions, mm -hmm. win over, you know, appealing to folks' hearts and minds. Again, mm -hmm. they both can work given the specific situation. So first and foremost, I, would, I guess I would suggest be aware and understanding of the power dynamics of your situation, the power dynamics at play before you do or say anything. Because like I said, the emotional appeal could work perfectly for some, the value proposition will work better for another, and the facts might work better for another, or some combination of all three. Because this, the biggest thing, blocker that I've experienced is that, you know, folks might not necessarily hear what I'm saying and take it as fact. Okay. Um, folks might second guess my expertise just because of my identity or how I show up in the room. And they might not even be doing it on purpose. It's just, they can't really put their finger on why what I said rubbed them the wrong way. Ever. <laughs> and so it, it's kind of those weird, like, did they really just, I know they didn't just, yep. they did. So you're not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> when you experience these things, don't try to, you know, say to yourself that it's not real. It is. Okay. Like I said, analyze the power dynamics of the situation so you can understand how far you can push and then come up with some type of strategy that will help you long term. Sometimes the short gains might feel good in the moment, but if you're thinking and you're playing this corporate game, you have to, it's chess, not checkers. You have to think long term. And maintaining those relationships are super, super key. Um, if you are feeling alienated and isolated and alone, mentorship, advocacy, sponsorship, finding, they say finding, you know, your group, finding your people, finding your team is super, super important because you're going to need that emotional support because unfortunately, you're going to be asked to do more emotional labor than your peers. Um, so that's a very long winded <laughs> way of saying all the things that I have had to do throughout my life and my career to kind of keep going and not okay. be held back. By that was me. a great, that was a fantastic answer. And is there any books you recommend or training you went through? Um, one I would like to share is acting with power is a mm. Stanford training that I actually went through online. Um, mm. and, and it just shows you the different power dynamics. So when you have those conversations, when to push, when to pull, when do you lean in versus when do you receive, right? And just yeah. knowing the power dynamics, that helped me out. Um, and another one I like is um, um, it's challenging uh, conversations or I get the exact book title and I'll put it down in the description, yeah. but it's a negotiation book and it talks about having difficult conversations and how to keep someone um, safe inside the conversation right so if you know you like how you mentioned that sometimes they don't take your idea seriously you can easily check them right you know that's easy but will that keep that person safe and open in that conversation so how do you have those conversations but i make sure to put the link to the resources yeah. below but did you have yeah. anything you use any type of training linkedin learning anything yeah like at the top of my head i was like nah and then i thought about it i'm like hmm I actually did read a couple of things that actually helped me get to know myself. Cause that's the other thing you have to also know yourself, know your strengths and kind of be very aware of who you are internally. Yeah. Um, so the alchemist was one of those books for me that helped me unlock yeah. just that introspection stuff. And then the Tao of Pooh actually. So it's this book that explains Taoism by using the Winnie the Pooh characters. Yeah. And it was definitely a, a good framework of thinking uh, to eliminate struggle and to allow you as an individual to kind of just be a little bit more still, a little bit more fluid. Um, those two books helped me a lot. 
um, figuring stuff out. While I was at Harvard, also, I did a bunch of trainings. They offered a lot of those types of trainings for their staff, like having difficult conversations, managing up, um, collaborating, design thinking. So, yeah, those two books are super helpful. Oh, the memo is also super helpful by Minda Harris. Um, it's specifically kind of written towards women of color and helping them navigate corporate America about while keeping their wits intact. <laughs> what was the name of that book again? The Memo. The Memo. Okay. That was a really good one that I just recently finished. Actually, one of my colleagues gifted it to me last year for my birthday. Uh, I love yeah. books. So yeah, books as gifts are always great. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, really just my lived experience and talking to my elders. I was raised by my grandparents. My grandma specifically had a couple different careers, mostly in corporate America, mm -hmm. during a time where uh, it was a lot worse than it is now, socially. So just listening to her stories and learning from her and having conversations with folks who are older than me, who had different experiences than me, have really helped. Fantastic. That's great. So all those books, I'm going to put it down in the description. So don't worry. And then what I'll do is I'll find some LinkedIn learning trainings and some edX trainings that you can go ahead and some free trainings and make sure pay training. So then you can go ahead and invest in yourself, right? That's one thing I think what Fallon is saying that she spent time to invest in yourself because these yeah. challenging conversations aren't going to go anywhere. And as you climb the corporate ladder, it's imperative to be able to have those, you know? So mm -hmm. we're gonna make sure we empower you after that. So one thing that um, I find that, um, that I'm looking into, and I have, I just, I'm a recent, you know, dad, a father, and I have a daughter, right? So one thing I'm looking into is like, how does she negotiate? I know she only 15 months, mm -hmm. I got a long way to go, but no, start you, know, now. It starts, <laughs> you know, how do you negotiate, right? Like, how do you make sure that you're not getting paid less than your colleague and y'all doing the same amount of work or sometimes you might even do more work, right? What did you do to prepare for that? Um, how do you get people comfortable? Cause one thing I read about is, is women just don't ask, they don't negotiate. And I hate, when I say that, I hate absolutes. But what they, what they studied is said that most of the time women don't like to negotiate. So they take that first offer. So mm -hmm. one thing I like to say is, you know, uh, HR rep is to pay you as low as they can. You know, I know now they've been changing to make it a, uh, a little bit more fair but their job is to get you as low as they can because that helps the bottom line right so how do how should they go about having that conversation well going back to the previous answer you have to know your worth okay. understanding yourself understanding your worth and understanding what only you can bring to the table is going to be key because that's going to be your value proposition that no one else can say like before we saw we talked on the call I, I said pretty clearly i was like i know content strategy I know content creation. I know community building. Mm -hmm. Just like that, straight like that. I know that. And so maybe there is somebody else who maybe has those same three strengths, but I have to go in with that confidence. Like I'm the best at this, mm -hmm. no matter what, no matter where. And that took a lot of time and that took a lot of practice. That's why I'm saying like all that hippy dippy mindfulness stuff actually <laughs> it's super helpful okay. because if you go inward and you can understand who you are and what you offer that only you can offer, mm -hmm. you can already have that internal confidence that you're going to need because <laughs> once you start asking for stuff, especially based on your, like your identity and the, the power dynamics and all that stuff at play, you might not get a good response. And even if you push, you still might not get what you want. Um, so I would say the step zero, <laughs> going inward, understanding yourself, making sure you know what you only you can offer and then leading with that. Um, second thing, research, 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 research. So you can go in there as confident as you want to be like, hey, I'm the best. I need a million dollars. And the industry says the highest salary you could get there is 90K. That ain't gonna work. <laughs> so, you know, do your Googles, uh, levels.fyi. Um, I know they don't have all of the positions in tech available, but that's a good resource. I know Glassdoor has some, some salary stuff that you can search and like Indeed as well. So do your research and figure out what the market value is for that role so you can understand what the industry standards are in that location so you know what makes sense. That way they can't tell you, oh, we only have this much budgeted for the role. Eh, industry standards say that 90 is really 120 here in Austin. Yep. So what's up? Um, 
The other thing is not always about salary. There's other things that you can get. You can get, you know, I work at Cloudflare. We're a publicly traded company. Um, you can get stocks. You can get time off yeah. for parents, right? If you're traveling, maybe that means I have, you know, two weekends a month that are non-negotiable for family time. Yeah. You know, it's not always about the money because unfortunately, to your point, you know, the, the recruiters and the folks who work, work in HR, even though they try their best, ultimately their goal is to the company. So you just really might not get what you want. I've tried to negotiate and I always ask for more and it's rare that I've gotten it, but I'm always going to try. Yeah. So I think if you kind of approach it in that way and kind of think about it through that lens, you can, you can, you can set yourself up for success. I've also been hearing, mm -hmm. I don't know, I haven't tried this yet, but maybe the next time I negotiate, say the number first. <laughs> Not necessarily letting the other folks at the anchor, because again, as a woman, they want to try to lowball you. Yeah. So letting them say that number first and setting that anchor low doesn't help you. Yeah. So maybe you might want to think about saying a number first, which goes against conventional wisdom. Again, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm yeah. seriously thinking about it the next time I have to. True. That's that's some good advice and something you could do that I end up doing in uh, in my uh, I guess my last. Uh, my last job I, I offer I took is they couldn't hit, they couldn't get me where I wanted on my base, but they gave me a huge sign on bonus. So Ding. it's a one-time payment. <laughs> so think about that. A, co a company will do that. Why? Because on the books, it says you get paid X amount, but that one-time sign on bonus for that year, you're going to hit that number that you wanted. Mm -hmm. So for me, I like cash now, right? The most cash I can get up now if possible. I can use that and invest and do other things with it or put it away from my daughter or whatever it needs to happen. Right. So sign on bonus bonuses are good. Three books that I definitely read that helped me out was Getting to Yes, um, mm -hmm. Never Split the Difference, and Negotiating Genius. Um, so again, what you're seeing here is investing in yourself, right? So my job is I'm going to research, use Glassdoor. You're going to do, oh, LinkedIn also has a salary tool. Cool thing about that okay, is cool. one thing you could do is what I did is I called someone there that I knew. And sometimes I don't even know a person. I reached out to LinkedIn. I called them. Say I'm applying for this job. This is my background. And where do you think I should be um, aiming for for the job? Right. And then what helped me there was, especially if you know someone, they'll give you the ballpark. They might not tell you how much they make, but they give you the ballpark or they can see internally what numbers that you can ask for. And that mm -hmm. gives you kind of where you want to be. And one thing I always say, I add ten to twenty thousand dollars on what I want to be paid because they say, you know what, Slide, we can't do twenty. But we could do five, though. I'm like, hey, I just gave myself a five thousand dollar bonus, right? I so wanted, I just wanted two hundred. You know what I'm saying? That was good, <laughs> yeah. you know. So I'm probably giving my game away. So if you're a recruiter, stop listening to that. I don't do that yeah, often. Yeah, same, same. What? I'm just okay. joking, man. But you got to figure out and assess the uh, the actual um, the company and the job mm -hmm. role. What's the caps, the minimums? And also, yeah. I have taken jobs that paid me less to learn. So mm -hmm. I've taken jobs that I didn't make that much, but the knowledge was outweighed it and then i got that pay that i deserve in the next job the next yes. career and you always can walk away too so well, and then you know brands also matter like if you if you're working in tech and you get the opportunity to work at one of the big ones yeah. that again having harvard on my resume as a, both a worker and a student i know will help me in my future all day i never expected to do that but while i was there i literally i had to make the most out of it because that opportunity just it doesn't happen often that so brand. again if you get the chance to get out of google or facebook or whatever or cloudflare actually yeah. what am i doing a cloudflare hello come <laughs> the experience is gonna be worth it it's gonna be great and then if you like me who went to state college it's all right you might have to do a little bit more so what i end up doing is building a portfolio Right. So I got a YouTube channel that you're watching now. Right. I showcase my skill sets because sometimes if your school doesn't have the the maybe the branding as another right. school, you got to find a way to differentiate yourself. So if we can, if sometimes I, I said earlier in my career, I had an interview on Wall Street and everyone's from Ivy League schools. But me, mm -hmm. I finished second to last. I didn't get the job, but I was on, I beat the other kids out because right. I could show them what I could do. Right. So mm -hmm. sometimes you got to realize that um, you got to be your best advocate. And sometimes people in technology don't like to boast, but don't boast the show. 
Like I'm a person, I show you what I can do. And you know, that opens you up to criticism. I get people that slide, that's not the best way to do it. But I'm like, all right, tell me how to do it. But then you learn fast, right? So those are some other mm-hmm. things to do. So um, one thing I want to ask is any favorite books, podcasts? I know we talked about that a little bit earlier, but it was like in general. What's your go-to mm-hmm. book? You know, if you got to give it to somebody, what, you, what, what, what are we talking about? And what you listening to in your podcast if you had to pick one? Mm-hmm. I think my go-to book would actually be the first two that I mentioned because I find that the Alchemist and the Tao, okay. who, anybody can kind of get something out of that. Yeah. I find that the other stuff, yeah, lately that's really what I've been reading. I got the memo. I have that Trevor Noah book that I'm working on. Yeah. And then I have a book that my cousin sent me on boundaries that I haven't started reading yet. But the yeah. Trevor Noah book so far is very good. Oh, okay. and um, so you want to talk about race. That's yeah. another book that I, I read recently that I love. Mm-hmm. But um. Given everything that's going on right now, uh, like I said before, I'm a nerd and I intellectualize things. So really, I'm digging into history and, okay. and really just trying to understand how we got here yeah. <laughs> socially, yeah. politically. Yeah. Um, so my podcast, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I read books for fun to kind of take me out of that. But the podcast that I listen to, I listen to um, What a Day Every Morning, it's 15 minutes of news very quick um i listen to the read for some good entertainment (laughs) and they're hilarious um i listen to oh i'm watching love land country that show on hbo so like if i watch a show and there's a corresponding podcast i'm all about it and that's true for all all the shows i watch so like if it's rupaul's drag race or love land country or the watchmen yeah i'm listening to the podcast uh yeah i think that's about it it's like culture race Okay. news politics all right so uh <laughs> so that was great so she gave you her go-tos and i guess we're gonna finish this up but how can people reach you what's the best way they can find you um and let's share it right now or anything you want to talk about this is your time right now for the <gasps> audience well you know when i was a child i always wanted to no okay <laughs> no we're good we're good um <laughs> i would say linkedin is probably the best way to catch me um no. And I have my own portfolio site if you want to check out some of my work that I'm trying yeah. to do a better job of updating. Also, if anybody wants to help me redesign it, please hit me up. Um, cause oh. I don't have time. Um, Fallonblossom.com is my portfolio site and it's the same on LinkedIn. I would love to connect. Fantastic. And the links are going to be below. So if you don't know, now you know. Fallon you know, Blossom. you know, you know. You know, so <laughs> Fly Gittins, Tech Simplified is out. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to be coming with even more fantastic women and just bringing them to light to show off their skill sets. So make sure you keep tuning in and don't worry. I'm still going to be doing my Microsoft security training and my certification training. And I'm taking the AZ 500 next week. So, you know, I'm about to add another certification to the belt. So I just keep on moving. But until next time, Sly Gittins and Fallon is out. Peace.